Okay. Hi, my name is Michael Richardson. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how my ACP called Hermes Connect is uh, created. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this diagram. We're going to talk about this mostly and then I'll do some other stuff. Um, so this depicts a uh, system um, that's mostly blank because the, the tension is, of course, your application uh, runs here. Uh, does some things and um, you have an Ethernet device E0 but you might be a 24, 24 port switch in which case you should duplicate this um, in some to some level. Um, Hermes Connect system with the ACP will typically create a Mac VLAN uh, device um, and that is essentially a kind of kernel level bridge. You can also use a, a, a regular Linux bridge and it will actually figure out which is which and do the right things you can't do the both at the same time um, and then there's some things so this triangle here represents an unprivileged uh, virtual networks namespace or virtual uh, routing uh, and forwarding area and this um, lozenge I think it's called that space that shape um, diamond is uh, the autonomic control plane VRF and there's a couple of demons and other things here that are represented here and uh, this is a, a kind of this this mechan this diagram part of the diagram here represents that there's an Ethernet pair where there's one inside the ACP and there's one outside. Um, uh, these are also Ethernet uh, devices. Um, they're virtual, and I'll talk about those in a moment. So you've got all of this. I've this system happens to be called Ovid. No reason why. Um, and this one is Moira, and it's ident exactly identical. So we're going to look a little bit at how the ACP works and how it connects. And basically, I've put some layers on top of this diagram to explain some things, what's going on. So the first part to realize is that the GRASP demons um, do some announcement. This is step A. Um, and they announce with their dull, that's uh, a particular type of unprivileged GRASP process, that each machine exists. Having done that, um, they then they, once they notice each other, they then do some control, control code to the IPsec Ike daemon, and the Ike daemon negotiates an Ike uh, uh, session. Um, and that happens over IPv6 link local addresses that, based upon this thing that you've seen. This results in a IPsec tunnel. Um, the IPsec tunnel is anchored not within the unprivileged VRF, but to interfaces that are pushed into the uh, ACP VRF and so traffic that goes between those two interfaces is encrypted within that red line travels over the ESP packets which originate from the unprivileged VRF and then emerge the inside unencrypted part emerge within the ACP VRF that's a little bit hard to get your mind quite around but if you think about these as actually being separate machines with multiple interfaces, then you probably feel better. Effectively, the Mac VLAN is the um, unprivileged, or sometimes it's a black interface, and sometimes it's the red one, depending on which part of the continent, uh, which part of the Atlantic you're on. Um, and then this interface is the privileged interface or encrypted interface, and that's your basically VPN gateway concept. So. Um, to that, uh, we now have two com ability to communicate between these two machines, between these two VRFs. And there's two demons that would run. One is an RPL uh, instance, an RFC 6550 instance, and a BGRASP demon as well. So that's number D and number E. Well, uh, that's not actually how the traffic flows. So let me turn this off for a little bit and let's make it clear. That's actually how the traffic is flowing between it. It goes inside that tunnel, and my line's a little bit funky. It doesn't quite get inside of that tunnel the way you want it to. Um, and we could also have um, uh, the some some other application that goes from point to point. There's some network items here that seems to have disappeared, but we'll find them in a moment. I think they're there. Uh, wow, they really are gone. I wonder where they went. Well, there are some boxes that have disappeared. The point here is to understand is that uh, 
this management traffic that we think of as going from point to point actually of course it actually goes all the way through that whole thing now you don't have to put all of your traffic through through this you of course are running a network you're probably an internet service provider of some kind and you have um, this E0 may represent multiple gigabytes of actual traffic um, maybe with hardware to forwarding and all sorts of other things well if you want to also punch your traffic through your regular network um, because why not um, but you have the ACP as the backup well you could do some things where you for instance uh, you added an MCP uh, and multipath TCP to your your code and you could also do the shim 6 there's a couple of different ways of doing this these are very you know new technologies but the idea is that you can go through the red path or you can go through the blue path and if for some reason your network is not going well um, and the blue path fails um, and this is your management traffic well then you still have the red path you still have this path here available um, but your your blue path of course maybe is multiple gigabits per second and your red path maybe it only does a couple a hundred megabits per second because that's what you can do with software forwarding and that's okay we do always have the software forwarding in the in the ACP and you always can make that connection and get to figure out what's going on but if you did need more bandwidth you could get it